Hi, it's Sabina from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I'm going to share my first impressions on using the Canon R3. This is not going to be an in-depth review where I'm going to go into all the specs in detail, but rather a real-life evaluation of the improved autofocus system, including Canon's exciting eye control autofocus feature, as well as looking at the build quality of the camera body, its new sensor and image quality, and finally, my verdict if the R3 is Canon's best wildlife camera yet. Before I get started, I just want to mention that this is not a sponsored video. Um, but thanks to Canon South Africa that was kind enough to send the camera up for a few days, I had the opportunity to take it out in Chobe National Park, shoot lots of wildlife, you will see plenty of images throughout this first impressions video and I've also used a couple of different lenses just to give you a variety of shots to look at. So let's first look at the camera body itself. Immediately noticeable this camera is much lighter than my 1DX Mark II which is great. Every few grams that come off in wildlife photography is a bonus because of the big lenses we use as well. So roughly with card and battery inside, it's about a kilogram that camera weighs. And it has a vertical grip built in, which is also really great. I do not need to purchase another battery grip like on the R5, R6 to do my vertical shots. And the camera uses the LPE-19 batteries, which we know from the 1DX Mark II and III series. So that is as well great if you want to switch from either one to the R3, you already have the batteries for it. Battery life was decent. I could shoot easily about a whole activity, which is roughly three, four hours constant shooting. Um, the battery did last that long. I think I was shooting the one day about 2000 shots on one battery. So that for me is great. It is not as much as I would get out of my 1DX Mark II, but that was to be expected with the electronic viewfinder. It is also a magnesium alloy body with water resistance and dust proof, same as the 1DX series. That is great. That is really what we need out in the field. There's often dust, water, so it is nice and robust. It has a nice grip. Um, the fingers are lying nicely in the back in the camera. Um, so all in all, the build of the camera body is very nice. Another plus that I found is the flip screen, the articulated screen that they have um, included in this model. Uh, the 1DX series doesn't have it and I really like to have it for these low angle shots that we often like to do and it is very difficult if you do not have that articulated screen. So thanks Canon for including that on the R3. As we are used from Canon's high-end range cameras, there is plenty of buttons that can be customized to your own needs. For example, three back button focus options in the back of the camera, which is great, assigning different autofocus functions. And then of course the additional third wheel on top, same as the R5 and R6, that can be also customized for things like exposure compensation or whatever you want to have it for. So that is a lot of flexibility built into the camera body. I'm also happy to see that they've included the smart controller, same as on the 1DX Mark III, to easily shift the focus point as well as the easy switch from photo to video mode that both the R5 and R6 don't have. On top of the camera, you will also find a newly designed hot shoe and the eyepiece of the viewfinder is sticking out quite a bit more than before and that is to accommodate Canon's eye control autofocus feature. The viewfinder has a very high resolution and I didn't have any issues with blackouts even when shooting 30 frames per second. Um, Canon also gives you the option to simulate an optical viewfinder if that is what you are used to and if the electronic viewfinder feels a bit strange to you. However, it needs to be mentioned if you do use the optical viewfinder simulation, you can't see changes you make in the viewfinder like exposure compensation. So personally, I would stick to the normal electronic viewfinder view where you actually have the benefit of seeing how your exposure and colors change. Since it is a mirrorless camera, it has the RF mount where you can obviously mount RF lenses, but also use the adapter if you have EF glass 
And actually in this video I've predominantly used EF glass and it works brilliantly in combination with the adapter. Now my only complaints about the body of the R3 would be that it uses two different memory cards which is a CF Express Type B and an SD UHS 2 card. So for me it is always nice to have a camera that has two card slots with the same kind of cards which makes things just so much easier. You only need one card reader, um, the same kind of spare cards and not two different ones. I would have liked to see uh, the same as in the 1DX3, the same two card slots in this camera which would also make shooting redundantly so much more easy. My second complaint would be that Canon has included only a small HDMI I, uh, port on this camera although the camera body offers enough space for a regular one which is what I would have liked to see especially for us recording these videos for you guys we use this port all the time so maybe on the next one Canon you put a regular HDMI. One last little critique about the design of the body is um, in the back of the camera if I have my grip here my thumb lying in this little niche that they have built um, there's a little bump right on top here between the last two back buttons which I'm using regularly and I feel that this bump sometimes is a little bit uncomfortable. Something I have to get used to, that's not a deal breaker, it's not like I'm not going to buy the camera because of that, but just something I've noticed might be different for you, you everyone has different hands, but for me it's a little bit uncomfortable. When shooting with the R3 these past couple of days, I was most excited to test its autofocus capabilities. I've mainly used the camera in combination with EF glass mounted via the EF to RF adapter. And I generally found the autofocus to be a bit snappier and a bit more refined than on the R5 and R6. Also the eye detection seems to work slightly better and best of all I didn't have once the issue of the focus locking onto the background which I experienced quite frequently on both the R5 and R6 so that is great news. Canon has also now included some new autofocus area zones which can be customized meaning you can adjust the size of each zone to your own preferences. Now in the past I've never been a big fan of using zones for focusing but now that they have also included subject tracking that can be toggled on and off in each autofocus area I might actually use the zones more often to lock onto a subject or a group of subjects and then have the camera track it across the entire frame. By the way if you would like to know how I've set up the R3 for wildlife photography check out the link to my setup video on top. The best thing is that I can now have three back buttons set up with different autofocus options. I'm sure you've heard of Canon's eye control autofocus which I have allocated to one of the three buttons while the other two cover animal eye detection and spot autofocus. So there's a great uh, flexibility for wildlife shooting. The eye control is basically designed that wherever you look inside the viewfinder the camera focuses. And it is not a function that I will probably use a lot, but I found it works like a charm when I quickly have to switch focus between subjects and it can do it much quicker than I could ever be by moving either the smart controller or the joystick. I also found the eye control to be helpful sometimes if I can't um, grab focus with the animal eye detection if the camera just doesn't want to jump onto the animal that I want to focus I can then quickly um, use the eye control to point my camera in the area that I want to focus and then just switch back to the animal eye detection. More often than not this has actually worked and again quicker than me trying to shift the focus point around myself. On that note, the animal eye detection has still room for improvement, same as on the R5 and R6, um, and is usually working best on birds rather than larger mammals. But I'm still convinced that my overall keeper rate is much greater using the animal eye detection than me trying to shift the focus point around on erratic moving subjects, especially when shooting from a moving platform such as our photo boats. Plus I am hopeful that the animal eye detection will be more refined over the next few years. My skills probably will stay the same. Coming back to the eye control autofocus for a moment. Um, 
I unfortunately can't demonstrate this to you because I cannot use the viewfinder with my eye while the Atomos screen is recording. I just want to mention that it isn't designed to be pixel precise when focusing and also not to track fast moving subjects across the frame, but rather to quickly switch focus from different areas within the frame. After calibrating it only one time for landscape and portrait orientation, it worked great on my eye and the only time I struggled was when my eye wasn't close enough to the viewfinder and some light entered from the back. So you really need to make sure that you press your eye against the viewfinder and close it completely. It might be a bit more problematic for those of you that wear contacts or glasses and you might need to do a few more calibrations depending if you're wearing them or not. Lighter eyes are also said to have issues with the eye control but remember this is only the first version of Canon's eye control on the mirrorless system and there will be improvements I'm sure. So I was just shooting a half colored kingfisher in the dense canopy here right under these trees because that's the habitat where he likes to hang out. And that brings me to a great point of interest that I had when testing the R3 and that is its low light capabilities. So there's usually two things that are of interest when shooting in low light conditions like this and this is how the camera performs autofocus in very dark scenarios like these. Can it still autofocus nicely and quick? And the second one is how does the camera handle high ISO values? Is there a lot of image noise? How is the image quality? So it will be very interesting to see the autofocus really did work like a charm. Even down here I had to really shoot in between branches. It was very very dark and the camera's focus did not disappoint me. Once it grabbed onto the subject it stayed there. So the animal eye tracking worked perfectly there. How the image quality looks we check on the computer later. So all in all the R3 performs quick and accurate autofocus and having the flexibility of three Focus options just by shifting my finger is truly revolutionary when it comes to wildlife photography. Let's talk image quality. The R3 has a full frame back illuminated stacked sensor which ensures faster readouts and therefore a reduced rolling shutter which I didn't find to be a problem in wildlife photography and I couldn't come across any rolling shutter issues while testing the R3. But let's rather talk about the 30 frames per second in electronic shutter that result from the faster readouts. They are full 14-bit RAW files without any compromise, which I think is just mind-blowing. And you might think that 30 frames per second is a total overkill. And in most situations, I would agree. But in times when you photograph things like high action scenarios, imagine a kingfisher diving into the water or birds fighting in mid-air, passing food or a once in a lifetime hunt, believe me, you will be grateful having this option. It will be the difference of getting the shot or not. And I'm not going to argue that it will be a hassle to sort through the thousands of images later. But again, if it gets me the winning shot, then I'm happy to deal with that. Even when shooting with 30 frames per second in electronic shutter, I hardly ever ran into any buffer issues and even when I did, the buffer did clear quick enough and I could continue shooting. Now the 24 million pixels for me personally is again coming from a 1DX Mark II which has only 20 million pixels. Of course, uh, more megapixels are usually nice, especially if you can't get close to the subjects and you need the extra detail to crop in post. I guess I'm quite spoiled here getting fairly close to the animals that it hasn't been much of an issue for me. And I feel that the megapixel count of the R3 gives me a good balance between image quality, um, high ISO performance and file size. As I'm used to from Canon, the camera renders the colors beautifully with lots of color depth. Zooming in, there's plenty of detail even for 24 million pixels and the dynamic range is pretty impressive too. But what astounded me the most is the high ISO performance of this camera. The image detail, dynamic range and colors are in my opinion fantastic up until an ISO of 10,000 
and even 12,800 and 16,000 ISO still delivered what I consider usable results. More noticeable detail loss seems to start only above 20,000 ISO, but I could not see any terrible color shift even when shooting that high. So for a rare sighting, I'd be happy to shoot with an ISO of up to 25,600. The L3 also has in-body stabilization, which is effective when using non-stabilized lenses and up to eight stops of image stabilization when using certain RF lenses. So a great feature and an added bonus, especially when shooting slow shutter speeds handheld. So is the R3 Canon's best wildlife camera yet? In my opinion, absolutely. Although the 1DX Mark III is still Canon's flagship, the R3 combines the great advantages of the mirrorless system with the durability and robust build of the 1DX series. And if I had to invest in a new camera right now, it would be this one. I really like the familiar feel in my hand, the compact size and lighter weight, as well as the custom button options on this camera. Having three buttons set up with different focus options gives me the flexibility I need in wildlife photography. And combined with the high frame rate, I'm sure this will increase my keeper rate substantially. Animal eye detection, eye control autofocus, and subject tracking are perks that once used, I'm not willing to give up again, especially in the environment that I shoot uh, with lots of bird life and shooting from a moving platform. Having the much smoother smart controller to move the focus point instead of the joystick on the R5 and R6 is a small but nevertheless important upgrade. And of course, far more focus points and the ability to track subjects across the entire frame is a no-brainer when it comes to photographing wildlife. And finally, having a fully articulated touchscreen that will make low angle shots so much easier. In wildlife photography, these are all important features and Canon really has refined a lot from the R5 and R6 while designing a body that feels very close to a 1DX Mark III without the bulky weight. I probably should mention that the camera did freeze on me once, but it was quickly resolved by removing the battery and reinserting it into the camera. And if the R3 is worth the heavy price tag, I think only you can decide. I personally think that the R3 will be my first mirrorless camera without any regrets. I really hope this gave you a little bit of an insight if you were contemplating on getting the R3. And if you already own one, don't forget to check out my setup of the R3 for wildlife photography. And as always, leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, bye bye.